Hello everybody and welcome to the RevitKid.com. So today we are going to start a series about custom family creation. And some of you who are familiar with Revit and familiar with creating families, this might be a little redundant, but who knows, you might pick up something too. Um, we're going to start very, very, very basic um, with a generic family and add some parameters to it. And hopefully give you the basis before we move on to more uh, advanced objects. So I'm in the Revit 2011, Architecture 2011 uh, home screen. And you can start families a few different ways. You have your recent file screen right here where you can do different families. You can say new and just pop open a family and you can pick your family type. Or if you're in a project or you don't have your recent file screen op open, you can say new under the Revit Architecture button and you can say family so we're going to say a new family and now you have a ton of different family types to pick from these are all template files <clears throat> for the sake of today we're going to do a generic model um, I guess they pretty much cover every basis of a family you're going to create but if there's something way out of the ordinary that they don't have a family template for you can just start for a generic model so I'm going to start with generic model here and you can even change the category and parameters while you're inside of the family. <clears throat> so here's our family editor screen. Now, the family editor screen, if you notice, is a lot different from the project screen. It's the ribbon's got a few different um, elements as well as a few of the same elements that you might realize. Uh, let's go through them here. We get the manage, add-ins, modify. You see, it's a little a little less, um, but just enough to do what we need to do. So the very first thing we're going to create in this tutorial is just a simple box, but this box is going to be controlled by parameters, um, reference planes, etc. So first we're going to start with reference planes. Whenever you're creating families, a uh, little rule of thumb is to always, always start with reference planes, especially if it's going to be a parametric family. Um, your reference planes are going to be what, what pushes and pulls and drives your entire geometry. Um, eventually you can get into reference lines and model lines and all kinds of stuff to make things move but for this sake we're just going to do something very simple so I'm just going to get right into it I'm going to draw a reference plane so I'm going to type RP for reference plane or on the top you can see we have reference plane and reference line and I'm just going to draw a quick reference plane now there's already two reference planes drawn on here if you click them you'll see they're pinned objects and if you try and move them you won't be able to move them those are your center in the center of your object. So you want to try and keep those in the center depending on how your object is. If it's going to be pushing and pulling and you want this to be a base point, then sure, leave it there. But for the sake of this, we want it to be a square. So we're going to leave it here. Now I'm going to move this reference plane over a set distance. I'll just say one foot six. doesn't really matter. So I used MV for move there. You could also use up here, they have the move button. And now I'm going to mirror this across. So now we just have two reference planes here. So these are two reference planes. And if you see, if I grab one, it's going all over the place, doesn't do anything. If I grab this one, it's going and it doesn't do anything. So now if I go in 3D, you see there's nothing drawn. You don't see the reference planes. But if you want to, want to better understand the reference planes, I'll select one. So I'm going to select, a re I'm going to select show reference plane. and I'm going to set one of my reference planes here. So first let's go in 3D. So our reference plane right now is the first floor plan, so we're not going to see that. But if we wanted to show this reference plane, I'm just going to set it just so you see what a reference plane really is. It's a three-dimensional um, plane that you can draft on, draw on, extrude on, whatever you want to do. So right now we can't see the reference planes, there's no geometry yet, but I'll show you that in a second. So we have our reference plane. So we have two reference planes here. These are going to be the outside of our box. Now I'm going to draw two more. I'm using RP for reference plane on the keyboard shortcut, and then MV for move. And then just typing in the dimensions, and then MM is mirror. Um, all these tools can be found up on the top here. You can see we have move, align copy, mirror, all that stuff. So I'm just using the keyboard shortcuts too. <clears throat> so now we have our reference planes. Now what you always want to do is you want to 
add your parameters and make sure your reference planes work um, before you actually draw your geometry. So we're actually going to need one more reference plane. So this is the this is the uh, floor plan view. So now I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to go to my elevation, which is uh, our front view. And here are our reference planes that we just drew. This time we're looking from the front. And it'll make a little more sense once there's actual geometry there. So I'm just going to draw another reference plane here. So now we have three reference, I mean, uh, uh, five reference planes drawn. So we have four here, which is on the floor plan view, and on the front, we have one drawn here. I should have done a conceptual mass so that you guys could see all the reference planes, but that's okay. Um, we don't want to use conceptual mass, and that's a whole different story. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, re um, the plan, and we are going to create dimensions. And these dimensions are going to be used to drive these reference planes. So you can either type DI on the keyboard, or you can do um, dimensioning, which is over here. Under modify, you can do a line dimension. I just type DI. And we're going to dimension each one of these. So now I just did a string of dimensions across here. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to make these two the same. Okay? So there's our dimensions. Now, before I put any parameters on, let's say I want this to always be a square. I'm going to, I'm going to actually constrain it to be um, equally dimensioned. As you can see here, it says toggle dimensions equality. So if I click EQ, you can see it's going to pop up and there are going to be two EQs. But now if I grab this reference plane now, you can see they're actually both pulling with it. This is very, very important when it comes down to family creation because now if we have a dimension from here to here and we pull and we change the dimension, we're going to have a perfect square every time. Or a perfect, e each side is going to be equal every time. So now we want to do the same thing down here. DI for dimension. I'm going to press EQ. And now these ones will do the same thing. So that's good. We have reference planes that are dimension and they're equal now. So now I'm going to add another dimension. This time it's going to be an overall dimension. So there's my overall dimension. I'm going to do one more here while it's open. There's my overall dimension. So now you can see if I click this reference plane <coughs> and I move it, the dimension, the overall dimension changes and those still stay EQ'd. Same thing here. Now, if you've noticed when you load families into into your uh, project and you select them, you can go to your element properties and you have all those different ways of typing in dimensions for width, for height, for depth, for all kinds of different things. Those are what, I, what I'm talking about when I say parameters. And now to look at those within your family before we put it in the project, and I'll put it in the project afterwards to show you, is you can go to family types and you can see here it's all blank right now because there's no, there's no parameters. Um, we're going to add some parameters and be able to manipulate them. So if I cl click this dimension, on the top here there's a little uh, drop down menu called label and you can see where it says add parameter. This is where you're adding the control now. Um, I'm not going to get too in depth about all of these different um, options here. We're just going to use the basic type parameter. It's going to be a dimension so that's the type of parameter it's under. And I'm going to call this one width. Um, shared parameters, all this stuff. I, to, this is supposed to be very basic, so I'm not going to get into any of that now. So there we have it. Now you can see here it says width equals 3 foot 4. Now if we do the same here, we could give it the actual same dimension, or we can give it a, a, its own dimension. So let's call this one length. Click OK. I did the same thing. I clicked the dimension. I go to label, and I, and I added a parameter. <coughs> you can very well... Um, use the same parameters so if I said width and width and when these change they'll be both the same or we can do two separate so now if we look at our geometry we don't have any geometry yet but if we look at our reference planes and we go into our family types which is on the top left so that's the, the blue squares over there we have two new family types and if I change this so let's say I say the width is going to be four foot zero inches Oops. Okay. 4 foot 0 inches and I click apply you can see those 
those reference planes move. So I'm going to do that again. Let's go down. Let's go to six feet. So watch the reference planes down here. I click apply, and they move. I go four feet, apply, they move. Uh, same thing here. If I do three feet, apply, you can see it moved. I do a bigger one. Eight feet, look at those two, apply, they move. So now we have reference planes that are pulling along. Now we have to give one more reference plane um, control, and that's going to be our front reference plane. So this is going to be our height reference plane. So I'm going to dimension from the reference level up, or you could dimension from this reference plane up. It doesn't make a huge difference, only because the reference plane is locked to the reference level, as you can see there. Um, in more advanced situations, it'll make a difference, but right now, we're not worried about it. So two foot eight. Now if I grab this dimension, I say add parameter. I call this one the height. Um, now if I go to my family types, I have this new one called height, and I can change that to something like four feet. And you'll see the reference plane move up, and you'll see the reference plane move down. Now because these are type parameters, if you try and move it like this, it'll actually move. Um, only because of the new family editor. Um, sometimes if you do type parameters and you start locking other things, it'll throw an error when you try and move them if it's not an instant parameter. But we're not worried about that again. Now let's draw some geometry. Let's create an extrusion. So now I'm in the floor plan view and on our home button on the ribbon, you can see up in the top left, I'm going to create an extrusion. It's going to be a very, very simple extrusion. Now you could easily just click and sketch around, but it's not going to do anything. Um, you want it to actually lock to these reference planes. So what I'm going to use is the rectangle. I'm going to select the corners, and then select the corners, and you can see how I'm lining it up perfectly with the reference planes. Now when I click this, you're going to see a bunch of locks coming up. Or you would have if I actually clicked on all of them. Try one more time. So if I click here and click the intersection here, you can see all these locks coming up. Now, these locks can be your best friend or your worst enemy, which is kind of why I made that t-shirt saying noob and expert with the locks, because you really want to be ready to use them. But we are going to lock them, so this is locking the geometry. Now, we don't have to do it in the sketch mode. We could do it after, which is what I'll show you. But right now, I'm going to do it in the sketch mode because we have a nice little square. So I just lock all three of these. And what that does is it says this line, whenever this reference plane moves, is going to stay with it. So I press finish. Now if I go in 3D, we made a box. Now if I go to my front view, here's our box. This is the box we just created. Now this box right now is freeform. We don't have it locked to any height. So I'm going to grab the, the blue control, and I'm going to click it onto, I'm just going to drag it onto this reference plane. And when I let go, one of those little locks will pop up. Um, you could drag it or you could do a line, which the keyboard shortcut is AL, or up here, AL. You could select the reference plane, then select the face, and then you could lock them. So now we have a square, and this square is actually um, controlled by our reference planes. So if we go into our family types, you see we have width here. If I change this to two feet, if you watch the cube, it's going to shrink. If I change this to one foot, it'll shrink. And if I change our height to six feet, apply. It actually um, goes taller. And if you look in our in our elevation view, we just manipulated that those dimensions, but those dimensions are actually pulling our cube. So see our cube going up. Let me uh, let me tile the windows here so you can watch it in real time. <clears throat> so here's our cube. Here's our plan view. So I'm going to grab it, and you can see it growing and shrinking. So you can see all the views. We have our plan view here. We have our height here. So if I change it here, you can see it change there. And those are just being controlled by reference planes. So that's why it's very important that you get you understand reference planes. You understand where to lock them, when to lock them, when to not lock them, and also to check your reference planes before you actually draw the geometry. So I think I'm going to stop here today. 
Uh, I told you this is going to be very, very basic, and I'm hoping that it'll spark a little de either debate or just interest, and some of you will comment and maybe say certain things in families that you always had problems with, or maybe a family that you always wanted to see Bill, or something along those lines. So, thanks for watching. Uh, please comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the emails as well as the feed. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Let me find my little recorder to close it out while I'm waiting. And I hope this helped out. I'll talk to you guys later.